putting a glamour on the job, girls. We are the glamour. That'll do for night. Well, it's that time of year where we start our annual maintenance and every year we inspect our chain and look at it. But one of the things that we don't do every year is turn the chain. And that's what we're going to be doing this year. Now, the reason we turn our chain is to spread wear. If you think about it, um, you'll have so much chain that always goes down and you'll have so much chain that was always in the locker. And um, by turning it round, then you're putting the bit that's in the locker down onto the seabed and the bit that's in the seabed in the locker. It just means that you keep and maintain your chain for longer. Okay, so we're doing our uh, chain today, but it seems like a good time just to talk about our anchor system and the equipment we've got. Our anchor is a 16 kilogram delta anchor. And then on top of that, we have 50 meters of chain. We did have at one point 30 metres of octoplat line at, uh, spliced to the end of the chain, but we never ever used it. So in the end we took it off and we use it as mirroring lines these days. It works brilliantly and we love it. The other major components of our anchoring system are our snubbers, which we use as shock absorbers so that we don't load the windlass, and our swivel, which stops the anchor chain from twisting while the boat rotates around in the tide and things like that. And what we're going to do in this video, as well as doing the chain renewal and all the rest of it, is we're going to take you through all these major components of our anchoring system. One additional thing that we do use that's not technically part of the anchoring system as such, because it isn't part of the anchor, the chain, the windlass and things, is our anchor marker, which we also use for tripping the anchor when it falls. And we get loads of questions on that. We're going to do a complete bit on the anchor marker. So stay tuned for what we hope is going to be a really great video. So these are our anchor markers and uh, because Beverly and I were in uh, software programming uh, we actually put our anchor markers in a binary code. So uh, for me this is 10 meters, one zero zero, and I have it twice purely because sometimes I don't see it properly. But these little anchor markers are really good um, because you can see what they are. Some people also do paint, but one thing that really, really bugs me is people who use cable clips to do the anchor markers. Now, the reason I don't recommend cable clips is because um, if you're handling the chain, it wrecks your gloves, it wrecks your hands. And the other thing is, when it goes through the gypsy and the uh, mechanism, they can actually break. So, um, so these, they're very cheap. And as you can see here, they're doing the job. And they've been here for six years now. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a win. put the anchor back uh, remarking so we're remarking it and then I'm going to put the 50 meter mark in and then we've still got at least a meter's worth of chain so that if I do see 50 meters I've still got a bit of chain before I have my bitter end which I have yet to put on but I'll be putting that on in a bit. So um, we're all done apart from the fact that I have got to uh, put on the new bitter end. Um, 
I've decided to, rather than do a, a chain splice, I've just decided to do a three braid splice. Um, and I've made sure that the um, chain itself is has got no um, snags. So it's completely smooth. So I'm just going to do a splice. But the main reason that I realised that you have to have something like this is if you need to get rid of your anchor for whatever reason, you need something that you can cut. And that is another reason that you actually need rope on the end of your anchor. So this is our anchor swivel. Now it's massively oversized for this size of anchor. If you look at other boats around here, they're about half this size, but we were advised to use a big one because, you know, it just is. Um, this thing has given me nightmares for several years, but to be honest, it's never given us any bother. So the nightmares are beginning to recede. My nightmares were caused by the fact that it seemed a lot more logical just to attach the chain to this and have one link. That was it. Whereas what I've got is a shackle here, a bit of chain here, a shackle here, and a big thing in the middle that swivels around. It just seemed like a lot of points of failure. But to be honest, it just makes bringing the anchor aboard easy. The anchor spins and swivels quite nicely. The chain doesn't get all wrapped up terribly. So I think I'm settling down with this. One of the things that we were told was never attach the jaws of this directly onto the anchor shaft itself through here. Because as the thing gets side loads, the anchor will actually lever this out like a big crowbar. And then of course that pulls them, the pins out, causes stress fractures, it splits, and away you go, no more anchor. Uh, so what we've done instead is, most of our chain is eight mil. We were advised to go up one size, 10 mil, and put three or four lengths of it in, and a shackle, and put that through, and then a shackle at the other end. And that means that the swivel never gets stressed, no matter how much the boat moves around or the chain flops about, the swivel never has these jaws pulled out, and that's what keeps the swivel alive. So that's a top tip for you. Never attach these directly to your anchor shaft, particularly if they're small swivels, because they will be, well, I don't want to use the word delicate about anything in the marine ecosystem, but you know what I'm on about. So these shackles are going to be replaced with new green pin shackles because it's about time that happened. Um, the shackles aren't expensive, so why not replace them? We've had a little bit of galvanic reaction between the seizing wire and the uh, shackle, so let's get rid of it. It's going to cut them off with the grinder and we're done. you have your favourite toys out. Oh absolutely. So what I'm doing at the moment is um, I'm using copper brushes. Now um, copper brushes is um, softer than steel so um, and especially this is a hardened steel so it'll be the copper that wears rather than the steel so that's how I can use it but it is hard the copper is harder than the uh, dirt. But I have to be honest, the main thing that I really was very useful uh, getting the screws undone was our impact driver. Very environmentally friendly, that one. It doesn't have a battery. I know, but this is what I had to use to get the um, uh, screws out and the these sections here out. But, um, but yeah, so I'm just cleaning it all up, ready for inspection. So what are you doing now, Bev? Just seizing the shackle, making sure it won't ever come loose. I'm just going to actually tighten it up with the pair of pliers as well. Just to get it as tight as I can do before I seize it. Once we've uh, set our anchor and we've said that um, 
we're going to put out 35 metres of chain, it's at that point that we actually put our snubber on. So we've got 35 metres of chain at the top. I put the snubber on and then I let out more chain, dropping the snubber as I go. Our snubbers are five metres in length and they're made of nylon. This is our shock load. This is our what's going to take the shock of any stretches or anything like that. So this is like your uh, shock absorber for your boat. The only problem with this hook is that in a bouncy sea, it can drop out and it has dropped out for us, which is why we have a backup hook. Um, it doesn't have as big a load on it, but that's why we use this as the main one. Uh, however, it has got this catch and that means it will never drop out. Um, so we have this a lot shorter, but it's our backup snubber. While we're on anchoring, I've got this. We get absolutely loads of questions about this. And no matter how many times we explain it, there always seems to be another question. So I've decided to have a quick go at answering all the questions I'll ever get asked about this. Firstly, what is it? It's an anchor marker. And it actually says on it, Salty Lass, anchor marker. There's a reason for that. I'll come back to it. This is attached via just over two metres of rope that does not float to two nice heavy shackles, stainless steel ones. Doesn't really matter what they are as long as they are heavy. And the reason for that is when it's in the water, this bit floats in the water and that bit hangs vertically down. And that's the key. When this bangs against the side of the boat, that hangs vertically down. That never goes under the boat. Well, we're very glad that we have a non-floating anchor line because it seems that the stern of the boat is right over the anchor. The anchor ball is right behind me and I can see the trip line going down, lying on the seabed, curling around a couple of times in the seabed and then going under the boat. So it means that when we come to pick the anchor up, I'm going to have to go that way first, come round and come back because the anchor's right underneath us at this point. If it does go under the boat, our keel is 1.7 and our prop is a little bit higher than our keel. So in other words, this rope is always down lower than our keel, our prop and our rudder. So even if this bangs against the side of our boat, these do not touch any of the underwater fixtures on the boat. And that means you don't get tangled props, you don't get tangled rudders and you don't get tangled keels. And that's really important because we have had bad experiences in the past. The rest of this, we often get asked is, if you're going to use this as an anchor marker, doesn't it just be a bit of a nuisance? And it is a bit of a nuisance to use, to be honest. But what it is really useful for is pulling the anchor out. Three times last year, we would have lost this anchor, or we reckon we would have lost it, because it got fouled on the bottom and we couldn't get it out. Normally you pull your anchor out backwards, sort of thing, toward the shank, that, that direction. But if it's lodged under a rock, or uh, an old chain or a rope. If you're pulling it that way, the rope just gets caught in here and you can't get your anchor free. And it's a couple of meters down, you're not gonna to get to it easily. So what you do is this goes through. That. And what you do is you leave some chain out, you drive the boat past the anchor so that this rope is like that, floating on your boy. You've got most of it up by now. And what you do is you give that a darn good yank. And it pulls your anchor free of the obstruction on the seabed, whatever it happens to be. Now, people say, how long a line should you use? Now, you've seen our anchor chain, and we've marked it every five metres. So for our own convenience, we anchor with a five to one scope. Because that way, no matter what we're letting out, the answer always ends on an anchor marker. It's just easy. So if we're anchoring in four metres of water, four times five, it's 20, so the chain will stop on the 20 metre mark. Easy. If we're in 5 metres of water, it stops on the 25 metre mark. That's just us. If you want to anchor at 4 to 1 or 3 to 1, you can set your chains to the appropriate depth, or you can just do the arithmetic. Entirely up to you. We just went for that for your convenience. So the upshot is, we tend to anchor at roughly about 5 to 1. And we've got 50 metres of chain. Divide 50 by 5, that means that we should never anchor in more than about 10 metres of depth. So this is 10 metres long. 
It's that simple. And people say, well, it won't always stay directly above the anchor. If you're in shallower water, this will move around. It does. It moves around a bit, but it never goes too far away from the anchor. We always know where the anchor is. And more importantly, we can always use this to trip the anchor out from an obstacle underwater. And that's its main purpose. Now, one of the things we want to finish off with is the anchor marker, which we've shown you earlier in the episode. And there's a number of pros and cons. People, so they're a bit marmite People either love them or they hate them. Some of the cons are the obvious ones. If you're in a busy anchorage and you have an anchor marker out, it can maybe take up space that a boat could swing through, and there's an anchor marker there. We think we have that cracked with our design, but it's something that people do bring up. Uh, people also bring up that sometimes people try and moor to your anchor marker, which is why we have the words anchor marker on ours, so it's clearly not a mooring ball. Uh, another issue which crops up sometimes is uh, tangling the prop. We have done that in the past because we use floating line. The heavy weight that we have holding the line down means that there's nothing to tangle the prop. The line is always under the boat, and when the boy bangs against the boat, even at the stern, and we know this for sure because we've had it happen, the anchor line stays down, clear of all the prop, the keel and everything else. If other people's boats bang into it, it keeps them clear as well. So I'll just say, I think we've got that particular one sorted out. On the plus side of using an anchor marker, it gives the helmer a nice visual reference to aim for. It's just easy to see where the anchor is. It's also easy for other boats to see where the anchor is. So one thing that does happen, or shouldn't happen, is they come in and they shouldn't drop their anchor on top of your anchor, which can happen, or drop their chain over your anchor because the ball marks where you've got the anchor. It also gives them an idea of your swing radius because in a busy tight anchorage, if you're in a 30 meter radius and they're in a 30 meter radius and the anchor's only 20 meters apart, well, it's not gonna end well, is it? So that's another thing. Uh, the biggie for us though is tripping. We have used it to trip the anchor Three times this year, we reckon we would have lost our anchor and it acts as an excellent trip and saves your anchor. It's as simple as that. So one additional thing that could do, you've seen Gaynor um, talking about putting the line on to hold the anchor chain to the boat to make sure that you don't accidentally let the chain all go over the end. If for some reason you do have to abandon your anchor, it's tangled, there's uh, some conditions, there's a boat coming that you can't get out of the way of, whatever, you can cut that leave the chain and the anchor in the seabed and the anchor marker tells you where to come back to you to pick it up and it even lets you pick the anchor up so you can retrieve everything. So we think the pros outweigh the cons and we're going to continue using our anchor marker. Mm -hmm.